What's up guys, I think I'm going to be doing something new on my channel and that is weekly updates of me just talking about things that I'm working on, um, things that I've learned and um, future projects and stuff that I am interested in or am currently thinking about working on. So that's what today's video is going to be. It's not going to be a tutorial video or anything like that. It's just going to be me talking about the things that I've discovered or worked on over the past week. I think it'll be a, a nice addition to my channel and it'll help me sort out and kind of document my, my little journey. So before I jump into the boring stuff, which I'm assuming is all the code that I've done, uh, let's go ahead and see the audiobook maker in action. So I have a, um, I have text file I have a book name and then I'm gonna use the Zuckerberg model that I trained just to see how it sounds and then I am gonna go ahead and start the audiobook generation and we'll get to see how the Great Gatsby might sound if being narrated by Mark Zuckerberg so here we have the the first sentence right here and I'll go ahead and play it in my younger and more vulnerable years my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. He didn't say any more, but we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way. And I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, um, inclined to reserve all judgments, a uh, habit that has opened up many curious natures to me and I'd also maybe the victim of not a few veteran bores. And so that is a quick little demonstration of uh, the audiobook maker. And one thing that kind of made me um, made me laugh a little bit is it catches on like the us. It's adding its own us into the sentences, which I don't know if I like too much, but it's uh, very interesting that the transformer model inside of Tortoise put those uhs into the sentences because I think it, it makes it sound a little bit more natural in the way that Mark sometimes talks. But that is the audiobook maker and with that I'm going to go ahead and jump into some of the more technical side of things for what I've been doing this week and uh, yeah. But actually before that I did want to address one thing that a lot of people are leaving and that is Google Colab. Why am I not making this Google Colab friendly? Well, Google Colab has recently started banning stuff like RVC. So number one, I don't even think we'd be able to use it on Google Colab unless you have Google Colab Pro. And also the GUI that I'm using isn't compatible with Colab at all because it is using PyQt, which it is a cloud service and you can't actually access a GUI there. As well, one additional limitation is that Tortoise is currently running on a local machine and in order to call the API for it, you need to be on the same machine and to get it all up on the cloud, we're handling with something that is much bigger than what at the current moment I have developed and have tested out. To do that would be quite an integrated problem and is one thing I am working on so don't lose hope there but um, it's currently not the priority for me right now so sorry about that to collab users. This is the audiobook maker right here and I did a lot of refactoring of the code and changed a lot of um, the logic inside of the audiobook maker for how it organizes sentences, how it knows what t certain sentences are and so what I ended up doing was creating a data structure for the audiobook maker to know what sentence to grab for which audio and if that sounds a little bit confusing um, don't worry uh, I would be confused as well uh, this is a JSON file that I have and what it does is it maps a certain sentence to a certain audio file. So that's not what I was doing before. All I was doing before was simply having a sentence list and just taking that sentence list, loading it into a list and then using the index values to map to the suffix of the of the audio file to play the audio and that is not robust at all. It does not allow me to um, change. The big reason that I needed this was I wanted to be able to change the audiobook without deleting the audio and without making the audio files or audio paths not found. And so I went ahead and thought that 
well, I'll need a data structure to do this. So this is what I have. Uh, this is what I've come up with. And as well, inside of this dictionary, I have this generated value that allows me to know which sentence I have audio generated for. And so if I scroll up to an area where I stopped, I stopped at sentence 30, 31 actually, and this is true. So it has an audio path, but right here, I stopped and it is generated false. So um, that's very important. So let's say I want to continue generating audio. I added a new feature inside of the audiobook maker where you can click continue audiobook generation, go over into that audiobook, go over into one and then um, select the audiobook to continue. And so I don't have tortoise open right now, so it's going to um, not continue generating, but that is a neat little feature that I thought would be great to add into the audiobook maker because it allows you to modify it on the go. I'm sure many of you guys will find that helpful because sometimes you put in a text file that doesn't have all of these sentences you want or you want to modify some of the sentences if you're not just doing um, like an audiobook generation or you're doing it for something else, you might want to be able to modify it. So beyond that, um, you may see that there are a couple of missing buttons down here compared to my last video. Um, that is because I put a file menu bar so uh, you can load an existing audiobook. So it'll bring up a window here. In this case, I could load something like the first audiobook. You can update the audiobook sentences with a text file. So if I went over into my audiobook maker, went to text hash instead, um, this is warning me that it'll delete the audio for these sentences that have been modified. So I'll just go ahead and click yes, and then go ahead and go into the audiobook that I want to modify it for. So, um, and then a new pop up is going to pop up and say, would I like to generate audio for the sentences? I'm going to click no. And if I go over into it real quick, I can now see that I have two sentences in here with both generated false. So I could continue generating the audiobook from there if I so chose. Um, and yeah, so that is pretty nice. And then lastly, I've got this export audiobook option to where you can just select what audiobook you want to export and it'll export the the whole audiobook by combining all of the WAV files. And so I do have this pause between sentences uh, feature right here. I actually, I can't, okay, there you go. Uh, there might be a little bit of a GUI bug. So I set my display to 175%. So that's probably what's causing it. But here is a pause between sentences slider where you can adjust the size or the pause between the audio files in case you want a little bit of an extra pause. Now, unfortunately, it is not dynamic, so it'll do it for the entire file. And if you want it dynamic, it doesn't currently support that. But I was thinking about adding that in the future so that it makes things a little bit easier for that. And so those are the big things that I was working on with my audiobook maker. Um, and overall, I think it's actually in a state to where it could be pretty useful if somebody wanted to clone their own voice and then read out an audiobook with it. It's completely possible, completely um, capable of doing so. But the updates that I did this week were not just limited to the audiobook maker, but in order to do this, I wanted to make it an installable package at the click of a button. So um, I had to do a little bit of modifications to how everything got installed. And so that brought me to making a different branch for my RVC to, to text to speech pipeline to where it's a little bit more lightweight and to where it uses RVC as a folder instead of as a package. So it's still technically, I guess you could call it a package, but it's located inside of the audiobook maker instead of pip installing it. And so this would be the package right here. So I've got the RVC folder in here before you would do something like pip install the GitHub repository and it would do that. Instead, you now have it inside of the folder. Um, and then you have to, and then I have this um, FairSeq wheels file that has to be installed as well. And this is because uh, if you don't have Microsoft uh, C++ build tools on your computer, you actually won't be able to build FairSeq and that is needed for this um, project. 
So to make things a little bit easier for the one click installation people, um, I made a my own wheels file that is compatible with Python 3.10, which is what you should download if you're using the audiobook maker. And everything could be set up by just using this batch file. So if we go ahead and open up this batch file, all it's doing is installing Torch uh, with CUDA 117, installing requirements in RVC, the requirements for the um, audiobook maker, installing FairSeq, and then it's installing the RVC to text to speech pipeline. So um, I can probably delete this one right here. I was running into some issues, which is why I have this um, second line right here, because I'm using the lightweight branch for the RVC to text to speech pipeline, but I haven't tested if it's going to break it yet. So I'm going to leave it in there for now. But this audiobook maker should be up and ready to go sometime this week to where you all can download it and use it. And hopefully I get some good feedback from that. So that is all the news on the audiobook maker. But I also wanted to talk about some of the um, adjustments that I made to the um, RVC text to speech pipeline. And then I also want to talk a little bit about some of the changes I made to RVC package itself. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into that. So um, if you're watching this as as a uh, as a non-coder, I am very sorry. Um, a lot of this is going to be just confusing and incomprehensible. I apologize up front. Some of the things that I modified inside of the RVC to text to speech pipeline was the RVC infer module except itself. So um, previously, the RVC module itself was quite mm, I guess it had a lot of extra baggage inside of it. So if I check what branch I'm on, if I go ahead and switch over to um, the master branch, you can see that I've got a, <laughs> a bunch of extra stuff in here. I've got like the config um, and then a bunch of other stuff that's located inside of RVC itself, like VC single, um, get VC or get voice change. And so if I go back to the lightweight branch, it's much more lightweight, which is why I called it lightweight. Um, because all it's all it has inside here is RVC convert and then a couple of uh, utility functions and all it does is use the RVC package which is why for the audiobook maker you need RVC located inside of the parent directory where the script is being ran from because it has to be able to access this path right here. That is the biggest change that I did to RVC infer as well inside of the RVC folder. Um, I did a couple of modifications as well. If we go into RVC itself, the big thing that I did was change the from imports to um, from RVC dot bef before all of these were um, just infer and so that would cause issues if you're trying to use it as um, kind of like a package because it would not be able to find it and so there are a couple of other minor modifications that I believe I made in here um, in regards to like the path of um, the Hubert file and a couple of other files but for the most part I wanted to make RVC as um, lightly edited as possible so that whenever they release RVC features or stuff that I want to add um, I don't have to do a bunch of modification to actually get it installed and working all I have to do is just change some of the imports around and that is much quicker than making an installable package each time and so that was my big motivation for moving away from the installable package side of things and just including the whole RVC folder um, I don't know if that is standard practice or you know but for me that's a lot less work that I'll have to do for maintaining the RVC package itself and so that is kind of what I am going towards here. I do have a new lightweight branch, but I digress a little bit. You know, the important thing about the important thing about the RVC package is that it is usable inside of my RVC, the text -to speech pipeline. And that is that. Now, there are a couple of other important things like the training modules inside of here that I will be using for my 11 labs, my local version of 11 labs, um, because I do plan on integrating uh, voice training into that, that Gradio interface. So that all you have to do is upload, let's say 10 minutes of audio. It's gonna train a tortoise model, and then it's also gonna train an RVC model. So 
I don't know how that how easy that's going to be in practice. I may run into um, lots of errors and need to debug quite a bit of things, but I think I have the idea on what I want to do with that. So those are the biggest updates that I had um, for the work that I've been doing over the past week for the audiobook maker and for the whole text -to speech pipeline, the realistic text -to speech voice cloning pipeline. And this it's in retrospect, it seems a lot simpler when I look back at it. I'm like, man, this 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 is uh, the changes I didn't do were not that substantial. But a lot of my time was taken by thinking and deciding on what route or what path I wanted to go on. So I'd say like 40% of the time was spent thinking about what I wanted to do and 60% of the time was doing the things and then changing it and then going back to do the things um, like this this uh, data structure right here that I have for my audiobook maker um, I was thinking about it and different implementations maybe I was like maybe I could use different different files um, to accomplish this but then I was like wait now to make it a little bit more modular and more robust I'm just gonna create one single JSON file and that is that. I am also playing around um, with changing some of the ways that Torch loads the models into um, RVC. So uh, I am changing the load to use weights only. And so this was actually brought up to me in my Discord for the safety of these um, PyTorch files. These .pt files, they use pickle to deserialize uh, the stuff that's inside of the .pt file, and that could include possibly um, malicious Python code, and I didn't want to deal with that, so um, that's why I am looking into using weights only, and so it's a PyTorch feature that allows you to just load the weights, which are just values uh, that the model uses for, for inference. And, so yeah, that should help with mitigating um, issues from using other people's voices or other people's uh, PT files or PTH files. But they do say and they do warn that as always, the biggest defense against any malicious files is download from a trusted source. And just beware that that is uh, a possible risk. So, but the weights only parameter is one thing I'm looking into, which is kind of cool. Um, what I mean by that is if I go to torch load, if I find a torch load, um, I can instead in here specify something along the lines of weights only and do true so that it only loads the weights. So um, that I'll be doing to my RVC package to make it a little bit more secure and um, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, today is just a little bit more of a laid back video of me just talking about things that I was working on the last week. So let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. Look out for a video that I'll be releasing later this week on a one click installable package for the audiobook maker. Um, you do need an, an NVIDIA GPU for that. So um, and I only tested it on Windows, but I think a lot of people are going to be able to use it and I'll be able to get useful feedback for that. So Look out for that later this week and um, yeah, I'll see y'all later.